My friends, the GPU market right now is in shambles, but you know that you don't need me to tell you that. So I wanted to see exactly what is the current GPU market like and what GPUs are actually worth picking up that are out there in the free open market. That is at the current pricing that we're seeing, which is not necessarily indicating scalping pricing, but just people who are getting, you know, $300 for their RX 580s here in 2021. So with that absurdity in mind, today is a look at the GPU buyer's guide that I have for you for September of 2021, given the actual prices that are out on the open market. But I will say up front that this is not covering any new launch cards. Anything that's in the RTX 30 series or the RX 6000 series typically isn't worth it and is either $1,000 or more and really just isn't what most people are going to be looking for. But if you want a buyer's guide for figuring out what you should get when it comes to the new series cards, you should totally go check out Optimum Tech's video where he just did a great job breaking down all of those numbers. Instead, we're focusing on what's actually out there for reasonable prices in various different price brackets, whether it's under $100, 100 to $200, all the way up to $1,000. And I'll give you my estimation of what I think of each of these so as to hopefully inform your buying decisions. And we'll do all of that after I tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's UFD Tech video is sponsored by Filthy. Filthy is a Kansas-based startup that began in early 2019 that makes a reusable nanofiber material that can be used in things such as furnace filters or converted into face masks. Prior to the COVID-19 outbreak, Filthy Filthy's core production was to make HVAC filters that are sustainable and reusable. So you can pick up Filthy's material as a face mask filter, or you can pick it up as the washable MERV13 filter, which is constructed using that patent pending nanofiber technology. It's proudly made 100% in the United States, and it maintains its efficiency levels for over eight washes. You can just rinse and repeat this bad boy. And in one year alone, in the United States, there are enough disposable filters to wrap around the earth 157 times. Times. That is absurd. And it's not just better for the environment, but it also saves you money. On average, a filthy washable filter will save you $100 a year, as opposed to having to buy a disposable filter every three months, which you should be doing in order to get the best air quality. And Filthy's washable filters are good for a full two years. Reusable, good for the environment. Reusable, which means it's good for your wallet. Reusable, which means you don't have to even go out to the store, my friends. So check out Filthy and their washable filters at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's UFD Tech video. Now, I do want to say up front, obviously, none of these prices are fixed in place. It's an open market out there where people are charging whatever they want for whatever card they have. This is just me aggregating the data as I'm seeing it here at the beginning of September of 2021. And I did my best to find the average sale price of each of these cards. So that is taking the last 25 sold listings on both eBay and Macari and averaging them out to get a decent price for the cards. Should you be paying this much for these GPUs? It depends on whether or not you need a GPU. I'm just simply commenting on the situation that's at hand, even as much as I wish it wouldn't be the way that it is. So I'm gonna break this down into six pricing categories. We've got the under $100 GPUs, one to $200, two to three, three to four, four to five, and then 500 to 750. And I'll throw in 750 to 1000 as a bonus, but realistically, I'm imagining if you're watching this video, you're not in the market for a 750 plus dollar GPU. So before we get into all of this, I do wanna let you know that these are my my personal opinions on the choices that you should be making. I'm doing my best to aggregate pricing data as well as benchmark data in order to make that decision informed, but some of it does eventually come down to personal preference. So if you disagree with any of my choices, sound off in the comments down below so that other people can make more informed buying decisions and take in a wealth of opinions because that's the best way to make decisions is having a multitude of advisors in order to come to the right conclusion. So don't take my word as gospel here, but just as a part of what you could potentially consider when picking up a card. And just keep in mind, all of these prices are aggregated data. So I'm talking about average sale price. This does not include what you can get the card for. A lot of these GPUs are not good deals, but you can get good deals on them. I'm gonna talk about a GTX 1070, which average selling price is 375. You can get that for really close to $300. If you're patient, you find the right deal, you can even get it lower than that. A lot of these cards you can get for cheaper than the prices I'm saying. I'm just letting you know what people are actually buying them for out on the open market. And additionally, if you find any of the latest cards at MSRP, pick them up at MSRP because for the most part, they make sense at the price point that Nvidia and AMD have recommended them at. Obviously within like, there's a few exceptions here and there, but if you find the 3060 at MSRP, that makes a lot of sense. You find a 3070 at MSRP, that makes a lot of sense. I, again, talking about open market, so it's slightly different here. 
So let's take a look at what the viable options are out on the market right now for GPUs that are under $100. There's not very many, simply because there's not many GPUs that are available out there that actually now have current driver support that are under $100. The GTX 700 series is basically gone because Nvidia is getting rid of those drivers. The 750 Ti 2 gig, since it's Maxwell, isn't including this driver lockdown and it sells for $75. You can also get a GTX 950 for $75 or you could get a GTX 962 gig for $95. All of these prices, I absolutely hate, but if I had to recommend a specific card in this price category, it would go straight to the GTX 950. It's not as dumb as the 960 at $95 because you're still only getting two gigabytes of VRAM. The 950 outperforms the 750 Ti in most games by about 10 to 20%, and with them costing roughly the same price, you're good. And then with driver support, hopefully they last both uh, identically as long, with them costing the exact same amount, I'd say the 950. Now let's move on to the more competitive price category, which is the one to $200 region. For this, we have roughly four different options. We've got the GTX 970, the GTX 960 4 gig, the 750 Ti 4 gig, as well as the 1050. Now the pricing on all of this is a little whack. The 750 Ti 4 gig is going for $100, the 960 4 gig is going for 125, the 970 is going for 175, and the 1050 is going for the exact same price. Out of all of those, I think I would still have to give it to the GTX 970, which I recently did a re-review of, which you can check out right up there. But this card stomps all over the competition that's listed in this price category. Sure, you're paying 75% more than a 750 Ti, but you are getting the performance out of the 970. It still holds its weight in AAA titles. And for $175, it's probably one of the best bang for bucks you can get out on the open market right now. Now in the two to $300 region, this is where we have a whole plethora of cards. Some of them shouldn't exist here at all. So we've got the 1066 gig sitting at 295, the RX 584 gig sitting at 300 bucks, the 1063 gigs at 240, the GTX 980 costs $250 right now. 780 Ti goes for 250, which you won't have the driver support for very much longer. The 1050 Ti comes in at 225, the 1650 at 250, and the 1650 Super at 300 bucks. I think out of all of these cards, my recommendation would go to the GTX 980. Sure, it only has four gigabytes of VRAM, so you're not getting as much as a 1060, but it can still hold it in its weight class and beats basically every card that's on this list at the same price point. The GTX 980 is a little limited, but at the same time for $250, you're not getting a better frame rate per dollar out of a GTX 1060 six gig at 295 because the 980 beats it in a remarkable amount of circumstances. Besides the ones where you're actually over consuming those four gigabytes of VRAM. The 980 would get my recommendation here. I think this is probably one of the most controversial recommendations I'm going to make, but that's the one I'm going to stick to. Three to $400. We've got the 980 Ti at 325, the 1070 at 375, the 590 at 375. An RX 590 is costing $375 right now, friends. The RX 588 gig is for 350 and the GTX 1660 for 400. Now I'm not gonna continue my streak of recommending the GTX 900 series here. The 980 Ti is a good card at 325, probably would suit you really well, especially with six gigabytes of VRAM, but I think for an extra $50, picking up Pascal makes a lot of sense. The GTX 1070 is going to get my recommendation here, especially when you compare it to the 590, it absolutely wipes the floor with it. With the 980 Ti, it's going to go toe to toe with that card in a lot of circumstances. I'm also thinking if you're going to hold on to this card for a while, especially if you're spending $375, it's going to have better driver support moving forward. Pascal is better at performance per watt, which means that you don't need as high of a power supply. It just makes more sense to me in this instance. GTX 1070 wins this price category. Let's go to four to $500. We've got the 1070 Ti at 450. We've got the 1080 at 475. We got the 1660 Super for whatever reason at $450 and the 1660Ti at the exact same price because they're essentially the same card. My recommendation is going to go to the 1070Ti at 450. It's roughly close to a 1080. It's just like a few percentage points below, but you're not spending an extra $25. Honestly, you could argue that the performance per dollar is better on the 1080, but given that the average price of the 1070Ti is 450, I think you can wiggle down that if you wanted to hassle or negotiate or wait for a good deal, you can make that happen. Now let's talk about the last price category, which hurt me the absolute most to find some cards that are listed in this price category. The only other card that baffled me more was the Radeon 7, which is selling for like 15 to $1,800 right now, which is just 
mind boggling. But in the five to $750 category, we've got the 1080 Ti coming in at $650. The RTX 2080 at 750. RX Vega 56 sells for an average of 725 right now. The Vega 64 sells for 750. The RTX 3060 is coming in at $700. RTX 2060 is coming in at 525. 2060 Supers at 650. The 6600 XT is at $650. And the 5700 XT is at 750. I think out of all of these, my recommendation goes to the GTX 1080 Ti. It has the 11 gigabytes of VRAM that you're gonna need for all of the latest 4K gaming titles that are out there. It still competes with an RTX 3070 roughly. It beats the RTX 2080 in a lot of instances at $650. It makes the most sense to me. If I had to give a runner up, it would be the RTX 2060 at $525. Staying closer to that $500 mark makes a lot of sense. You get RTX baked in there, DLSS in case you want it. And the RTX 2060 is actually like, it's, it's an all right card. Should you pay 525? No, but it, that's where it is. And then in the 750 to $1,000 category, I've got two cards for you. This is the bonus one. You've got the 3060 Ti for 775 and you got the 3070 for $1,000. Go with the 3060 Ti, I guess. So those are my recommendations of GPUs that you should buy right now. Out of all of these, which one do I think is the best performance per dollar? I think it's the King, the GTX 970. You get so much performance for less than $200. It's, it's actually held up remarkably well over these past six, seven years that it's been out. It's, it's a great little card. It's probably gonna hold on if you can find one in good condition on eBay. Hopefully you can get it for closer to $100 because that's really what you should be paying. But based on average market pricing, I think out of all of them, 970 wins the top crown for me. What do you think of my recommendations? What card are you expecting to buy out on the open market right now? Have you been purchasing GPUs that are used because of the new GPU drought? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And in case you want some more GPU comparison videos, you can go check out the GTX 1060 versus RX 588 gig video that I did recently in case you're interested with that. And I will see you in the next UFD Tech video, my friends. Cheers.